خلقك خلقك الحمد لله ما حد بياخذ منك رزقك هدي وارتاح تابر وارضح من حقك بس بلاش العين لا 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 ما تسوى الدنيا مضيق خلقك الحمد لله ما حد بياخذ منك رزقك هدي وارتاح تابر وارضح من حقك بس بلاش العين Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. A very warm welcome to every single viewer. Uh, this is a very special edition community showcase brought to you by ITV and directly from our studios in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, today we are featuring a very, very special organization, an illustrious one for the lack of a better word, and that is Jam'iyatul Qur'a, the Academy for the Memorization of the Holy Qur'an. My name is Taj Aklika and I would be your anchor for this part of the show. With me in studio, I have uh, Sharif Abbas, the chairperson of Jamiyat al Qurra, and then of course also Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriels, who is the Amir of the Lajna at Jamiyat al Qurra. And perhaps for the protocol and this part of the show, may I please just uh, focus my attention on Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriels. Uh, Sheikh, as the Amir of the Lajna of Jamiyat al Qurra, what exactly does your role entail? What, what, what give, can, could you contextualize it for us? Inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Brother Taj and dear viewers of ITV, it first of all gives me great honor and privilege to represent uh, Jamiyat al qurra and community showcase uh, for tonight. Um, Alhamdulillah, I've been appointed as the Amir of Lajna last year. Uh, it serves me and it gives me great honor to serve an uh, institution that was established by one of our great giants, Sheikh Yusuf Bouli. May Allah grant him Jannat al -Firtos. I just want to make clear before I'm going to come to my role, it just proves to us and to the whole community that if a person loves the Quran and he puts so much energy in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants, look at the fruits of the Jamiat al Quran. My role is basically uh, to look that everything runs according to the Sharia of Islam. We are busy with the Quran. This is the main source of the Sharia. So we are first to implement the Sharia. And I'm also responsible to, spe to see that um, everything uh, goes uh, in, in, in accordance to the, the words of our beloved Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, 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 and also very importantly, Brother Taj and dear viewers, uh, I also, I'm, I'm also responsible to see to the spirituality of Jamiat al qura of the teachers, and of the learners and, and that's given me great honor because that is uh, the, the, the main and important thing of, of learning the Quran. So uh, Alhamdulillah we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are connected to Quran. Um, I'm responsible to see that the children love the Quran, they, they make time for the Quran. I'm responsible to see that like Nabi Muhammad said if you read the Quran, uh, cry, cry, put yourself in a spiritual state of crying because you are reading the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, once again, um, alhamdulillah, uh, just yesterday when I uh, did one of my visits to, uh, to the, the female side, I was very close to tears because I was, uh, for two reasons, uh, I was, uh, Sheikh Suleiman Benjamin was listening to one of the girls and the way she read with proper tajweed, uh, as a senior person of the community, I felt very, very uh, happy and comfortable, alhamdulillah, that our future is in good hands. And then secondly, the reason why I felt very emotional is, Sheikh Suleiman uh, informed me that tomorrow, inshallah, a girl of nine years old, she's completing the whole Quran, alhamdulillah. And if we look at the history of, of Islam since the time of Rasulullah, the greatest leaders uh, are those people who have memorized the Quran at a very young age, at a very young age. So that is what Jamiyat al Quran is busy with. Not only uh, uh, um, teaching children to, to memorize the Quran, but our goal is that these children, each one of them, become great leaders of the Ummah one day, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Shukran, Sheikh Ibrahim uh, Gabriels. Um, uh, Sharif Abbas, chairperson of Jamiyat al Quran, welcome to this beautiful spiritual space. Uh, uh, Sharif, Brother Sharif, uh, tell us a little bit about the origins, I think the history of Jamiyat al Quran, so it has a very rich history. Can I just perhaps put forth that question? Indeed, the, the origins of uh, Jamiat al Qura is great and the history rich. We are truly blessed 
uh, at Jamia al Qura, I believe that there's extreme, extreme baraka uh, in this institute. You know, whatever we undertake, alhamdulillah, it comes to pass and we realize that. Mm -hmm. But I think we've also been blessed with great, great founders of this organization. In the person of Sheikh Muhammad al Marhum, Yusuf Bully, uh, we still have uh, Sheikh Musa Gouda with us and Imam Ali Khirdin. These are the giants on which we, on whose shoulders we stand. And unbelievable in terms of their great wisdom that they've given to us, the inspirational leadership. And in the, in the case of Sheikh Musa and uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Yusuf Bully, very, very accomplished Khufad. Let me say to you that uh, this organization was started in 1969 as a Talawatul group where they recited the Quran on Thursday nights and on Sunday mornings at, in the different uh, masajid as, as well as in the homes of people when they had functions, alhamdulillah. But what is noteworthy that they always sculptured a vision to establish an institute that's credible, that can produce the best Hufad out there, comparable with the best in the world. And we've done, we've truly done that including Sheikh Yusuf Bully's 100 Khufad, the institutes, the Girls Institute, which we started in 2006, and the Boys Institute, which was started on February the 11th, 2001, we've produced another 150 Khufad. Sheikh Yusuf produced plus minus 100. From Jamiat al Qura, over 250 Khufad. But what is notable about this? that the Sheikh Musa and Sheikh Yusuf studied under the renowned Sheikhs, the, Al, uh, the Alawi Al, Al Maliki Sheikhs, and we know that they are the descendants of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the methodology that is still used today in Jamiat al Qura comes from that Sanat, and it can be traced back to the time of our beloved Prophet, where the, the Sahaba sat at the feet of our beloved Prophet وسلم, in learning the Quran. Um, Brother Sharif, we, just want, we, we have time limitations, but I just want you to very briefly take us through the programs, and of course, you have a very, you, you have a very impressive project. Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Share with us you know, the, the, the core program is always taqfid. You know, that's the core program. But the demands today from the education department, the demands from parents, and the demands of uh, youngsters having a credible career, we cannot neglect the rest of their education. And we've defined it as total Islamic education. So we do the taqfid, but we've got an academic program where we teach math, science, language, as well as life orientation skills, where we do deep akhlaq training, as uh, our beloved Sheikh noted earlier. But we've also got an Islamic studies program where we teach the Islamic sciences of Tawheed and uh, the Sirah as well, as well as the Fiqh and so on. And in addition to that, we believe in our programs that we want every learner to know the Arabic language. And we started that serious program, inshallah, so that every learner graduating out of Jamiat al Qura will have a working knowledge of the Ar Arabic language so that they can dig deep into the, not only the reading, but the understanding and then eventually the implementation of that Quran, inshallah. Sharif Abbas, every success to you. Thank you very much for your time. It was very special sharing these moments with you. Shukran Jazeel. We'll just go for a short ad break right now, but please don't go away. This is very, very special. Shukran, we'll be back in a few moments. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and welcome once again to Community Showcase on ITV beaming to you live here from our Cape Town studios, South Africa. In studio now we have uh, Sheikh Ahmed Sears, he's the Institute Manager for Jamiat al Qurra, Male Hafid Institute and of course joining me also here um, this evening is Sheikh, Sheikh Suleiman Benjamin, he's the Principal of Jamiat al Qurra female institute. Sheikh Ahmad, if I may just start with you quickly. Uh, what's the admission policy regarding the school and what do you do 
what do you offer in terms of assisting children when, of course, uh, when they enter and whilst they're learning? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all the viewers of ITV. Uh, Taj, it is, it is a very honorable and blessed opportunity for every young learner to take on the memorization of the Quran, to embark on this journey. Yes, we do have an admission policy regarding the age. We have a criteria between the ages of 9 and 18. Coming from grade 3, we prefer them. We've noticed a trend from parents the way the children have completed their primary schooling and then come over to us. Our program is intensive. Um, it requests discipline, you know, application, but it's inclusive in the sense that we invite everyone from all areas. We've had boys from Malaysia, we've gone nationally, and alhamdulillah, this, this helps us because the Quran in itself is inclusive. We do assist students, although they're eight hours with us during the day. We give them a home program. We help them with the eating plan. You know, so when they do come to us, it's always holistic. It's holistic in the sense that they will always continue to learn the Quran and with the knowledge of this, take to the parents as well. The parents must encourage this. It's important that the, the home environment is conducive to learning of the Quran. Sheikh Suleiman Benjamin, if I can just bring you into the uh, into the, the discourse, can you just speak to us about the journey of a student when he or she steps into your school? Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah ma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah Taj, when the child comes into our institute, we start with the basics. We start with the bridging course, we start from Alif Bata. No matter what is your background, we start from Alif Bata and we do our inside reading and from there in every stage you will be tested so we don't go to the next stage of reading inside reading if the part one and the part two is not read properly we have a policy proper recitation before memorization alhamdulillah after every juice the child will be tested we have a hod system there where the child will be tested by the hod and when it's five ages are the child will also be tested, alhamdulillah. And it goes on till 10, 15, 25, till it comes to 29 ajazah. When the child comes to 29 ajazah, she's got, she's got to read uh, ajazah out by the principal. He gives them of approval. The child completes the Quran, and thereafter, she basically have to do a round, or two, or three, or five, Basically, we do about 10 rounds where we say the child is ready, alhamdulillah, to tamad. Tamad where she's been tested all over the Quran, any place. So she has got to be ready, ready. And that is so important that the child is monitored all the time, from the beginning to the end of a journey. Shukran, uh, Sheikh Suleiman. Uh, Sheikh Ahmed, if I can just bring you here on, uh, bring you in here on the uh, on the institu institution of resources. Yes. So, how can supporters and donors be part of your school on a long term basis, both the financially as well as within the human resource sector? Taj, with the admission, um, we have obviously parents coming from a disadvantaged position, and um, we have the program called Adopt a Hafid, where the donor can come and offer a long-term investment, and I'm not saying donation, this is an investment, because for every letter being read, it will go for the sadaqah and for that purpose of that donation as an investment. The child comes, he is either an orphan or it's a single mother, they adopt the hafi, they get a bit of history of the child, and the child learns um, with the intensity that is required from a child to learn the Quran. It goes over four years, you know, and I think this is an opportunity, um, especially on the 25th of uh, June when we have our pledge to a requ uh, request from donors that they can join us, inshallah. And we have this open door policy. We request from every single donor, long term, that started with our beloved Sheikh Yusuf Bully to come and visit us again, you know. It's important that they come to the school, meet our teachers, meet our students you know, see what we're about, look at our programs, look at our setup, and alhamdulillah, we've got the four campuses now. 
you've got the, the primary school, you've got the preschool, the girls and the boys side, alhamdulillah. So it's important that they do come and they join the family, inshallah. Uh, shukran, Sheikh Ahmed. Uh, just a final question to uh, Sheikh Salam and Benjamin. Hafidahs, how important is it for our young ladies to take the journey of memorizing That's the very, Quran? very important. SubhanAllah. This, the mother is the madrasa of the child. You know, imagine a mother being a hafidah, coaching a child before she's born, reading the Quran, ya salam. And we know today we need that so much. Alhamdulillah, if we get the female even to go further than that, learn the meaning of the Quran, ya salam, then we will have a better society, obviously. But definitely, it is very, very important that we have to somehow or the other go into looking where the females are concerned to bring more of them into this Quran um, um, memorization because like we know, the Quran, Nabi Sallallahu left two things behind and that one of it was the Quran. You know, when we, and we were never, Nabi Sallallahu said, Lan tawdillu abada. We will never ever go astray if we keep on to the Quran and Sunnah. So it's very, very important Taj, that we promote this idea that the females must learn the Quran more, then we obviously will have a better society. Shukran, uh, shukran, Sheikh Sulaiman. Uh, viewers, we have had in the studio Sheikh Ahmed Sears, the Institute Manager for Jamiat al Quran Male Hafid Institute, and Sheikh Sulaiman Benjamin, the Principal of Jamiat al Quran Female Institute. On the 25th of June, of course, it would be the big pledge line, and as you've just heard, that your space needs to be and your resources need to be within the confines of Jamiat al Qura. So we look forward to your pledges on the 25th, but in the meantime, let's just go back for a short break and then you don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh once again. And, uh, this is a community showcase on ITV and we're beaming to you live here from the Cape Town studios in South Africa. Welcome to this very special part of the program. And of course, the institution that we're discussing today is Jamiat al Qura, the Academy for the Memorization of the Holy Quran. In studio, we have two very special guests. So one is Nazima Omar, and she is the principal of the Jamiat al Quran Primary School. And then, of course, Nadima Benjamin, she's the principal of the pre primary school. Uh, Nadima Benjamin, can I just start with you, just to kick, kick off quickly? Just tell us a little bit about the program that you offer at the Jamiat al Qura pre primary school. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Taj and the ITV viewers. Um, alhamdulillah, we're the foundation um, of Jamiat al Qura as a whole. Um, that's, that's where everything starts. Um, Alhamdulillah, we have a program which incorporates the Montessori philosophy, where we also touch a little bit on CAPS, which is the curriculum of South Africa, as well as the Islamic studies and Quran. The Montessori philosophy um, is where our classrooms are equipped with um, imported Montessori materials. Areas which we cover is the practical life, sensorial, language, maths, culture. And then um, we also have the Islamic studies where we're looking at fiqh, tawheed, aqaid, as well as history, all which is at age appropriate levels and also with a part of their development, alhamdulillah. And then we also have the main focus is the Quran. Um, where we use the methodology of JEQ with a proper pronunciation and touch wheat, where the children start with the Yasin al Quran. They have part one and part two. So at the age when they start there, at two years, two and a half years, that's when they also start with the pronunciation and touch wheat, alhamdulillah. Uh, Nazima, if I may just bring you into the, into the discussion, Nazima Omar, you're the principal of the primary school. Uh, where was the primary school established? Uh, and of course, when? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The uh, Jamiat al Qura has a well established pre primary school, as we've just heard. 
Um, the problem was that when children completed the pre-primary education, they were too young to move to the girls and to the boys institute. There was this vacuum and parents had the difficult task of then placing their children in other primary schools to complete uh, the primary school education there and then either return to Jamiat al Qura Girls or Boys Institute and then um, or just leaving them in another primary school. Uh, with that in mind, um, the board of Jamiat al Qura decided that it's time to start the primary school, which is a registered Western Cape Education Department independent school. It started in January 2015, alhamdulillah. It's in its second year. And I think what's very exciting about the, uh, the primary school is that we're getting our own brand new building very soon, inshallah. Congratulations. Shukran. Very well <laughs> done. Uh, can I just bring in Nadima quickly? Your pre-primary school, what are the age groups that you cater for? Alhamdulillah, Taj. Um, from the age of two, two and a half years old to six years old, we, that's what we cater for currently. Um, because in the Montessori philosophy, the children learn through different age groups in one class. Like for instance, the younger ones will look up and imitate the older ones, where they're looking at how they work with the materials. Um, we're also looking at um, the older ones, where they like leadership qualities, and that's when they learn, where they actually show the little ones how to uh, interact in class, how to work with the equipment, how to. Um, just do basically things like you know where they um, actually work with the materials as well as where the how can i say um the just the the, the emotional development social development um, because the materials all has those that that um intact in, in, in it itself, alhamdulillah. And that is why at Jamiat al Qura, um, the children learn English, Afrikaans, as well as um, Islamic and uh, Quran. And what a holistic environment it is for uh, your child to come to our school, inshallah. Wonderful. Uh, <coughs> Sister Nazima, can I just bring you in here? Um, like my question to you is perhaps a little bit loaded. But why would anyone choose Jamaat al Primary School above or instead of any other Muslim school? The answer is not that loaded. It's quite simple, actually. <laughs> Our program is very unique. Uh, we have, because we're registered, we follow the national curriculum, which is CAPS. Uh, but it's also fully integrated with uh, two international programs. Um, the, the first one is, it's called IBER, the International Board for Education, Research and Resources. They have an Islamic Studies program, which we have integrated with the CAPS. Then we also have IBER's um, Skills for Life program. Now, those two programs, uh, Yusuf Islam is at the center of both of those. We've fully integrated that into the CAPS curriculum and we've included the Quran. So over and above the fact that the children learn and memorize the Quran, they also understand the Quran. Because whatever we teach them, all the knowledge that they are taught actually comes from the Quran in any event. So what we've done is it's, we've integrated everything. So as they're learning, they're also understanding whatever content they're learning is connected to the Quran and they themselves will look up the ayat and they themselves will read the ayat and they will understand it. So alhamdulillah, I think that's the exciting thing about Jamiat al Qura's primary school. And like we mentioned earlier, the fact that we're getting a new building means we're going to have a pledge soon, inshallah. And we're looking forward to the 25th of June, where the pledge line will be live on ITV. And um, we encourage everybody to get involved, inshallah, because we're really excited to get this building complete and actually take occupation within this year, inshallah. It's that close to completion. Shukran. Nazima Omar, that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, viewers, there you have it. 25th of June is the date of the pledge line. And of course, all for the, uh, the illustrious institution, Jamiat al uh, as, uh, as we prepare ourselves for the pledge line, where you have the opportunity to make a difference, to be part of this beautiful legacy 
of memorization of the Quran and be part of its growth and development. This is such a marvelous institution worthy of your support and worthy of your attention on the 25th of June when once again we will meet to take this organization to another level in its history. Shukran Jazeelan from myself, Taj Aklik, it's been marvelous sharing this space with you and I bid you wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. لا 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 ما تسوى الدنيا تضيق خلقك الحمد لله ما حد بياخذ منك رزقك هدي وارتاح تاب روح ما من حقك بس بلاش العين لا 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 ما تسوى الدنيا تضيق خلقك الحمد لله ما حد بياخذ منك رزقك هدي وارتاح تاب روح ما من حقك بس